What makes us qualified to be a disciple of Jesus? What is it that qualifies us to serve God in the church and in the world? Well, here's what's coming up. I want to outline the one qualification you need to serve God. And to do that, I want to look at the calling of Matthias to be an apostle from Acts chapter 1. The Bible is full of stories about God calling people into ministry, but one of my favourite passages is the calling of Matthias to be the apostle who would replace Judas. It happened just after Jesus had ascended into heaven. The disciples had left the Mount of Olives, presumably in complete shock, utterly bewildered at all the things that had taken place and they'd return to Jerusalem. And then Peter announced that the time had come to replace Judas with a new apostle. And to do that, Peter proposed a qualification for finding the right person in Acts chapter 1, verses 22 to 23. One of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day he was taken from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. The qualification was that the new apostle had to have spent time with Jesus and been a personal witness to his glory. To have spent time with Jesus, that is the only qualification for being called into ministry and to serve God. When we think about the great heroes of the faith, we might think about those people whose names are written large in the history books. The Wesley brothers, Martin Luther, Mother Teresa and so on. People who had an extraordinary call of God on their lives and achieved extraordinary things. But if we thought a little bit more personally about that question, who have been the heroes of the faith to us? Well then, we might come up with a slightly different answer. For me, the heroes are the people who nurtured me in the faith when I was an arrogant and annoying teenager. Local church people who never gave up on me. The heroes of the faith are some elderly people I've known throughout my life. People who've had a quiet faith, but been faithful churchgoers, faithful lovers of Jesus for many years, faithfully praying for the work of the local church. The heroes of the faith are some people I've known who have faced death, fear a shining example of how to die well. These, to me, are the heroes of the faith. Ordinary people living ordinary lives, doing ordinary things, and yet in their ordinariness there was exhibited to me an extraordinary faith. And the reason for their extraordinary witness was because they had met with Jesus in the ordinariness of life and had found him in the mundane of daily living. They'd spent time with Jesus and were witnesses to his glory. And the same is true for us, of course, that our qualification for being a disciple of Jesus is that to some degree we have experienced the extraordinariness of God in the ordinariness of life. And this seems to me what lay behind the call of the replacement apostle, someone who had found the extraordinary God in the ordinary of life. And so in our story from Acts, two people are recommended, Matthias and Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justus. So the disciples prayed together, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship. And knowing the tradition of scripture, we might have expected a calling on God to perform a supernatural miracle to show everyone who the next apostle was to be chosen. A thunderstorm or a voice from heaven, anything like that would have done. But what happens? Acts chapter 1 verse 26 tells us this. They cast lots for them and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to the 11 apostles. How ordinary can you get? The apostles cast lots, a bit like flipping a coin. And that was that. We might have expected something a little bit more dramatic, but I think there's something for us to learn in the ordinariness of how Matthias was chosen. Casting lots, a roll of the dice, an ordinary man chosen by ordinary apostles using an ordinary system of decision-making to bear witness to the extraordinary God. And that, fundamentally, is what the church is all about. Here we are, all very ordinary people living in church community in an ordinary way, doing our best to stumble forwards towards God, getting things right, getting things wrong, moments of being strong in faith, moments of being weak in faith, sometimes honouring to God, sometimes dishonouring to God as well. All of us are just ordinary people trying to get it right with God, but so often getting it wrong. 
And yet, by doing so, in the strength and the weakness that all of us have in our faith, we are bearing witness to the power of an extraordinary God. Because the qualification for discipleship is that we, ordinary people, spend time in the presence of an extraordinary God. You and I may have spent years living in the presence of God. You and I may have spent years knowing what it is to have Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. You and I, ordinary people, know what it is to love and be loved by an extraordinary God. And so the beautiful thing about this story from Acts, the calling of Matthias, is that actually it's a story about our own calling. Ordinary people being called by an extraordinary God. And that's why Paul was able to write in his letters that he could never boast in himself and his own achievements, but he could always boast in the awesome power of God. And so it is with us. We don't boast in ourselves, but we can boast in the extraordinary love and the extraordinary power of God, whom we have the privilege to call Lord. Are you qualified to be a disciple of Jesus? Are you qualified to serve God in the church and the world? Well, if you spend time with Jesus, loving him and being loved by him, the answer is yes. You don't need to be an extraordinary person to achieve great things for God. The wonderful truth is that all of us who are ordinary can achieve great things in the power of our extraordinary God.